This section will cover the self-disassembly process of the CK2500 Cabelco crane. First, place the machine on a firm, level supporting surface. Lower the block and ball on the ground, and lower the boom close to the ground. It will now be necessary to change the LMI setting into the setup mode. This is done by pushing the button on the LMI controller showing the boom being taken apart, and hold it for 3 seconds. This will allow all the necessary control functions to operate during the disassembly process. Now remove the cable and wedge sockets, disassemble them, and remove the anti-two block weights and the limit switches from the load cable. Wind up the anti-two block cable on the reel at the boom base section. Reinstall all bypass plugs at the cable ends and at the cable reel. Unreave the hoist cable from the load block. Slowly wind the hoist cable while keeping the wire rope tight on the drum. Secure the hoist cables to the drum so the cable does not become loose. Lower the boom tip onto good hardwood blocking. Disconnect the boom angle sensor, the anti-two block cables, and backstop limit switch at the boom base. Fully raise the mast assist arms and keep them up during the disassembly process. Lower the mast as needed to disconnect the guy cables. Now install the provided rigging and connect it from the mast to the lifting lugs on the boom base. Follow the rigging illustration found in the operator's manual. Lift up on the boom base to remove the tension from the lower boom connecting pins. Both ends of these pins are tapered, so the pins can be removed while standing safely outside of the boom. It is important that you stand clear when removing any boom connecting pins, because it is possible for the boom to suddenly shift as they are being removed. Lower the boom hoist and set the boom onto wooden blocking. Add the additional rigging to the mast as illustrated in the operator's manual and connect to the rear lifting lugs on the boom base. Boom up to remove the tension from the boom foot pins. Set the three-way switch inside the cab to the boom foot pin position. Remove the locking pins. Retract the hydraulic boom foot control to remove both boom foot pins. Slowly back away from the boom while lowering the mast. It will be necessary to program the LMI into the self-removal mode. To do this, first press the menu button, then select the settings screen and push set. Scroll to setting of the crane posture and push set. Then select self-removal mode, push set. Next choose with car body weights and push set. As the mast is lowered, it will stop at about 32 degrees. Then push the boom down button and hold it for 3 seconds. We will now install the block to the mast. Lower the mast to install the block. When the mast angle reaches about minus 9 degrees, we will need to place the LMI into the setup mode. This is done by pressing the button on the LMI showing the boom apart and holding it for 3 seconds. Then continue to lower the mast as needed to reeve the block. Use the rear drum to reeve the self-assembly block to the two center mast sheaves. The block should be reeved with three parts of line. Feed the load cable through the anti-two block weight. Install the anti-two block weight and limit switch to the mast tip. Connect the anti-two block cable ends. Secure the wire rope wedge into the wedge socket assembly and pin the wedge socket to the block location. Remove the anti-two block cable from this compartment and connect it to the receptacle on the side of the cab marked anti-two block. Pull the anti-two block limit switch by hand and check that the hook over hoist code on the LMI is eliminated. The block on the mast is now ready to be used to disassemble the crane. When the mast angle reaches its working radius, about 32 degrees, the LMI will have returned to self-removal mode and all codes should be eliminated. We will now demonstrate using the crane for self-disassembly. At this point, we will need to remove the rear main counterweights. Set the mast angle at about a 45 degree angle. Disconnect the swing alarm and flash your harness from the machine to the counterweights. First, turn off the engine and connect the counterweight cylinder control box to the receptacle on the right side of the crane. Move the three-way switch into the gantry tagline position. Start the engine and set the hand throttle to about 1000 RPM. Turn the power switch on the control box to the on position and remove the gantry tension member locking pins. Lower both of the counterweight cylinders as needed to connect the lifting cables. Connect the cables and raise the cylinders to remove the load on the pins. Remove the main mounting pin spring clips and slide the main mounting pins out to the release position. Now move both the left and right gantry cylinder control switches to the down position. 
The cylinders will work independently, so the operator can keep the counterweight assembly level while lowering. Lower the counterweight assembly down and set it on a firm supporting surface. Disconnect the counterweight lifting cables from the lifting brackets. At this point, the crane may be used as needed to lower the boom backstops. Disassemble the boom and counterweights to make them ready for shipment. After we have positioned the boom and counterweight pieces, we're now ready to remove the track frames. This process must be done on very firm ground or on steel plates. Turn off the engine and disconnect the hydraulic lines from the base machine to the track frames. Connect the two cables to operate the remote box for the translifters. Connect one end of the power supply cable to the receptacle on the right side of the upper structure and the other end to the lower switch box located in the main car body of the machine. Then connect the control box cable to the switch box. We will now move the translifter swing arms into the working position. First remove the swing arm locking pins on each of the translifter swing arms and place them into the empty hole next to it. Swing the translifter arms out to the working position and the locking pins will fall into place. Make sure all four locking pins are fully inserted and spring pins are installed on the bottom side of the lock pins. Install the floats on the bottom of each translifter and secure with locking pins. Now remove the hoses that are stored in the front and rear of the car body frame compartments. Connect these hoses to the quick disconnect fittings on the track frame. Start the engine and set the speed to approximately 1000 RPM. Move the hydraulic selector switch located on the left panel inside the cab to the translifter position. Turn the power switch on the control box to the on position. The four outside switches on the control box control the four individual translifter jacks. Make sure that the four floats stay firmly on the ground during the lifting procedure. We're now ready to lower the translifter jacks and raise the machine enough for the track frames to clear the ground. Extend the two rear cylinders up about three inches and then level up the machine by extending the front two cylinders the same distance. Make adjustments as needed to keep the machine level from side to side. A level is mounted on the car body of the machine as an aid to keep the machine level. Continue this process until both track frames are completely clear of the ground. We are now able to remove the track frame assemblies from the base machine. The total weight of each track frame is 51,400 pounds. Install the softeners to protect the slings and the track pads. Use a four-leg sling shackled to the four lifting eyes on the track frames. Now slowly lift the track frame until the small gap between the track frame and the main frame on the base machine closes. Now remove the smaller top mounting pins by hand. Then position the selector switch for the main track frame mounting pins to the retract position. These are the two inside switches on the control box. Once these pins are fully retracted, the track frame will be free from the base machine. Now remove the main pin hydraulic hoses from the track frame. It may be necessary to relieve the pressure from the hydraulic lines. Do this by quickly pushing the control switch in the extend position. These same hoses are also used for the opposite track frame. Disconnect the power cord so it will not be damaged when the operator swings the upper structure. A 360 degree swing is not allowed while one track frame is installed. Do not swing the center of the track frame past the translifter cylinders on the same side that it was removed from. Please refer to the operator's manual for detailed instructions. The working radius with the track frame is 20 feet. Place the track frame on the ground or on the bed of the transport truck. Now swing the upper structure around and remove the other track in the same manner. A 360 degree swing is allowed with the opposite track removed. After the second track frame is removed, lower the machine to the ground and level it as needed with translifters. Now reprogram the LMI self-removal mode to without car body weight. At this point, use the mast to remove the car body counterweights. Remove the mounting pins and lift the counterweight assembly from the mounting bracket. Each car body weight assembly is 26,455 pounds, so use suitable rigging for this lift. The working radius is 24 feet from the center rotation. Remove the connecting links and separate the two weights. Lower the counterweight brackets down to the transport position. We can now remove the load block from the mast. Lower the mast and then set the LMI back into setup mode as before. Disconnect the wedge socket and spool up the wire rope. Tie off the cable so it does not become loose on the drum. Remove the anti-two block limit switch and connect the bypass plug to the end of the cable. 
we will now fold the mast back to the transport position. Make sure the mast assist arms are fully raised. Remove the anti-two block cable for the mast and place in this compartment. Raise the mast until it reaches about 78 degrees. At this point, the LMI will stop the boom up function. Push the setup button on the LMI and hold it for three seconds. Now lower the mast assist arms while booming up. and set the mast onto the gantry. Keep some slack in the boom hoist wire rope as the mast is being lowered. Continue to lower the mast assist arms in the storage position. Now remove the gantry tension member locking pins and place them in the holders. Lower the right and left side gantry control switches at the same time and lower the gantry. Boom up as the gantry is lowering, but do not allow the wire rope to become tight. Turn the ignition switch off and remove the control box. The base machine is now ready to load on the transport truck. Connect the two cables to operate the remote box for the translifters as before. Move the hydraulic selector switch, located on the left panel inside the cab, to the translifter position. Extend the two rear cylinders up about 3 inches, and then level up the machine by extending the front two cylinders the same distance. The translifters will lift the main machine up 42 inches for easy loading and unloading from the transport truck. Slowly back the truck under the machine while making sure the machine clears the bed of the truck. Lower the machine onto the truck using the same method as before. After the load is removed from the floats, remove the locking pins and slide float away from the cylinder. Then fully raise the cylinders. Turn off the engine and disconnect the control box cables and store the control box in the compartment behind the seat. Swing all four of the translifter arms into the transport position and secure in place with the locking pins. Engage the swing house lock and all mechanical drum locks. The machine is now ready for transport. In this configuration, the total weight of the machine is 99,000 pounds.